everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own handmade paintbrush using materials that you have around the house that can be really fun to add texture and a unique quality to your paintings. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so the first thing that most of these have in common, and I'm just going to use this one as an example, is some kind of a handle and some sort of a brush material and then something that binds them all together. So let's look at some examples. To start off with a handle, here's some materials that could be commonly used that you could find around the house. Um, anything that basically you can hold with your hand that is a stick, plastic silverware. Um, you could even use a pencil, maybe an old one that doesn't have an eraser or um, you can use a straw, chopsticks work great, and you can even use something like cardboard for your handle if you want to scrape or hold on to it this way. So once you've gone around your house and found, or outside, found something that is a handle, the next thing you're going to need is your actual texture. So what kind of a texture would you like to make with your brush? Here are some examples of textures. Um, so this is the actual thing that is going to touch the paper and make the design that you're looking for. So perhaps you'd like a feathery design, something really delicate that will go on the page. Um, you know, maybe you actually want to have a few different endings to your paintbrush and something that will scrape and create different lines. Um, you know, just look around for a ribbon, string, you could even go collect leaves. Um, even a muffin tin can be a really cool texture. Scrap fabric, a little piece of an old sponge, a cork. You know, the sky is the limit here. You could even do bubble wrap. Let's see what else. Aluminum foil. Something that you want to experiment with and, and see what kind of a texture you can create. Ooh, even just looking right here. I really kind of want to use some of this aluminum foil and see what that would look like as a brush. Could be pretty cool. So just as some examples of textures people's have, people have used, this one has sponges as its end. Um, you know, feathers was a popular choice. Also, this is just pieces of yarn, which is pretty cool. Um, pom poms, that was fun. And okay. This is a crazy one, but I have even made paintbrushes, yep, out of my own hair. Yes, this is my own hair. This one I did not trim. This one I actually trimmed to have a blunt edge. But um, you can also make paintbrushes out of your old hair, which, you know, reuse, recycle, reduce. There you go. So choose a texture that you'd like um, to create, that you'd like to experiment with. That is the next material you'll need. And then finally, you'll need something that will help you bind your material to your handle. So here are some examples of things that can help us bind. You can look for something like string, rubber bands. Um, I know these ones came from like some asparagus or broccoli, so you can just look maybe in the fridge for those. These are hair ties. These actually work very great, these stretchy ones. Um, my own hair tie. <laughs> Uh, rubber bands. Also, if you have something like a hot glue gun, that can work as well. Um, you could even use probably a stapler, something that you can get to bind these materials to each other. I will say that duct tape is really helpful because it's waterproof. So if you reuse your brush and you want to use it a few times, for example, my hairbrush right here. I took an old um, paintbrush handle that the top had fallen off. I use duct tape here to, to help secure this. And you can actually see here, first I bound the hair together and then I taped it to the handle, which is the main step in making your paintbrush, which I will go into now. Okay, so I'll show a couple different examples here. Um, we can really start with any of these. Maybe I will start off with the pencil just since that is something that everybody should have but you could really start anywhere. And for my, hmm, for my paintbrush, I'm gonna show you guys string first, okay? So if you wanna make sort of a traditional 
paintbrush with you know hair kind of hanging off of it. I'm going to start off with some string and what I want to do first is make a little bundle of string. So I'm going to take my thumb and my forefinger and I'm going to pinch this string. Then I'm going to place all four of my fingers together and I'm slowly going to wind the string so it's wrapping around my hand. I'm going to try this slow but you can actually do this a little faster in real life. Um, so I'm going to wind it, wind it, wind it until I have a nice, oops, a nice little ring around my hand here. And then carefully because I wrapped my dominant hand, oops, I'm going to take scissors, trim that, and then I'm going to slide this little donut off just like that. So now that I have this little donut, I need to secure this together. Because I used string, I can just use another piece of string. I'm gonna go through the hole here so it loops like that. Tie it up like that. So I have this little packet, kind of like that. I'm gonna actually give it two knots for good measure. And now I have sort of an end of a brush. So I could leave it here, so it's kind of like smooshy like this and paint with it like that. Or I can trim it. And you know what, I'm actually going to trim it after I make my brush so it's nice and clean at the end. So there are my, my bristles, so to speak. If you didn't have string to tie those together, you also could have just taken a rubber band and, and tied it that way. Okay, so now I want to bind my bristles, my brush bristles to my pencil, my handle. So I'm going to take a piece of tape. I kind of like to do it this way. I like to lay the ta tape down sticky side up. There you can see the sticky side. And I'm going to lay this right on top so it's stuck. I'm going to put my bristles right here and then I'm going to pull this around and this is actually a little too long, so I'm going to kind of trim this a little bit. Pull that around like that so it wraps around. And then go back around this way so it's nice and even. And there I have the beginning of my paintbrush. You know, I'm probably going to take another little piece of tape just to secure that bottom part, you could take a different color if you have a different color, or just regular tape is great too, because you're going to be making all the color with your brush. Um, but there, now I have it a little more secure. And there's my paintbrush. I can leave it like this, but I kind of don't like how these things are hanging off here. Um, so I'm going to trim them. You can leave it like this, or you can put your scissors through the loops trim them like that and then you could give it another haircut if you wanted to too if you wanted it to be at a fun angle or looking in a different way and there's your pencil I kind of like this if you want to be super fun you can also give your pencil a little face your paintbrush a little face and then it has its own hair kind of fun yeah all right, so there is a basic paintbrush, how to make a basic paintbrush. Clips can be another great handle, especially because you don't need to worry about tape or glue and sticking the materials together. Um, I want you to get creative. Think about different textures, cotton balls, muffin tins. How can you make different tools that will give you different textures in your paintings? Here I'm using a straw and um, some pipe cleaners. I really like this foil and I want to make kind of a rolly brush with that. Here I'm making a scraper tool and turning my paintbrush into a two-sided tool so that it has two options for fun. And this one explores four different points of contact on the paper, sort of a, a four-ended brush. Okay, so to wrap your pencil, you're going to need string and tape or a hot glue gun. A hot glue gun 
works the best, but I'll show you tape since most people probably have that. So I'm gonna start off by putting a little piece of tape onto the end of my string. Then I'm gonna take this tape and I'm going to line it up so that the little end of the string is facing away from my brush bristles. And I'm gonna line it up right exactly where I want the end of my wrapping to be. And I'm gonna make sure this is really tight on here. You guys see that? So the little end is sticking away from my bristles and the bulk of the string is towards it. Okay, then I'm right-handed and I'm holding this in my right hand, which is kind of helpful for me. Um, my left hand is going to turn away from me and my right hand is going to hold this string taut and it's going to slowly wrap around the brush. So as I turn, I'm gonna do one loop and then as it comes around, I'm gonna go to the left of it so that my winding will go to the left. So I'm slowly turning it and you can see now there's two little bits here. If you want your string to be spaced out, you can leave a little space as you're twisting it. If you want it to be a little bit tighter so the tape does not show, you can just make it tight so that your string lines up like that. Keep carefully wrapping with a steady pressure all the way past where the tape and the end of the string is so that you can cover up that little end. To end it, you're gonna cut a length so that you have enough to tie it, and then you're going to make a knot around here. Well, if you're using hot glue, you could try to hot glue it, but I recommend tying it first. So I'm gonna make a loop, one last loop around my um, brush, and then I'm gonna put the end through the loop like that, and that forms a type of knot. And I'm gonna pull tightly, so that's one knot, just like that. And then I'm gonna try that again. So making a loop, sticking the end down and through, and then that's two knots. And then from here, if you wanna end your string and just have the pencil left, or the brush left, then you're gonna to want to do one final knot, not around the pencil, just your regular square knot, just like how you'd tie your shoes. And then I use my thumb to kind of pull that close to the pencil, to the brush. <laughs> And then I have one last knot that's stuck there. So from here you can trim the end, or if you want to attach a new color, you could also tie the ends together and keep going with a new color. Then I would take the end of my new type of string and I could make a knot here. So this, will, this is a knot, a square knot too, just like how you'd tie your shoes where you make an X, the top one goes under and around like that. And then to make it double so that it sticks, you do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna make an X, now the pink is on top, it goes under and around. And this takes a little practice to do while you're holding a paintbrush. You will notice that it makes a little, a little bump here, but um, you can stick bothered by the ends, you can stick those under the new place where you wrap, like this. Okay, so back to my wrapping. So I'm gonna move the pencil, turning it around, and you'll see that now those little ends are gonna be flattened on the inside. To end the wrapping of your paintbrush, you're gonna end it just the way you did before by tying knots and making sure that it's nice and secure. And if this last little knot bothers you, you can always cover it up with tape. And there you have it, a handmade paintbrush.
When using handmade paintbrushes, you're gonna to wanna to consider the viscosity or the thickness or thinness of the paint. Here I'm taking acrylic paint and mixing it with water so that it's a little bit thinner for my more delicate brushes. This will give it more of an effect like India ink and will be a little bit more transparent. The more water you have, the thinner your paint will look. Be sure to explore a variety of different marks with your brushes. For example, try stamping them, dragging them, um, using their sides, layering them on top of each other, and see the different textures and effects that you can achieve even just with one brush. What can you do that you wouldn't be able to do with a normal paintbrush? And how can you create texture in your artwork in a new way? And that is how to make a paintbrush using found materials that you have in your house. Have fun, guys!